All right, everybody, we're back to ABC Murders. And this is we. Uh, heck, and me, and oh. you, and every, Frost, and stuff. We got a whole gang here. Say hi, Frost. Can you tell the people hi? Can you tell them hi? Say hi. Come on. Don't, don't make me a bad trainer. Frost, tell them. Tell them. Tell them hi. Tell them hi. He's, he's not, no. Yep, he's not gonna. Can you tell them? No? Okay. Anyway, we're gonna finish this up. This should be the finale. So, let's do this. Everyone know who did it. It was Hercule. <laughs> it was Hercule Perot the whole time. Hercule Parrot. Parate. <laughs> Parate. <laughs> Alright. So, we just gave uh, Hastings a gun. So, cool. Wait, you gave him the gun? I thought you were looking for the gun. No, I'm pretty sure I gave it to him. Oh, uh, what did we need? Oh, no, we do need to bring it to him. But I where is remembered. it? There's probably one in your drawer. The white oh, ammunition are blank. Oh, right pieces. there. The others yeah, are real bullets. bullets. So these are the blanks, right? Yes. The revolver is loaded with blanks. I still have time to choose real bullets. I don't think we should. Why? Well, do we really want to kill somebody? It's just in case. Remember, this is America. The revolver is loaded with real bullets. I still have time to choose blanks. Oh, we have to. Oh, then yeah, choose a blanks. The white ammunition are blank cartridges. The others are real bullets. We're gonna take the blanks. I don't the like the idea. The loaded with blanks. I still have time to choose real bullets. I, I don't like the idea of, um, like killing somebody. So let's just hope that we can de-escalate the situation. What about telling me what you have in mind? Surtout pas. You wouldn't be able to play your role. Wait one moment, I will bring you my weapon. You have it, though. <laughs> I shoot I'm him. shooting you right now. You shot. Voila, I entrust you with my weapon. It has hardly been used, it is almost new. Gandhi mustache. Oh, because you chose peace. Mm-hmm. That's right, Gandhi did have a mustache. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Chief Inspector, is that you? Yes. Sorry, but we haven't found anything. Have you checked the typewriter? And the packaging, the letter, and the ribbon reel. We've only found prints left by Cust and his landlady. See? Well, I told you! It's the landlady! So, are you still going to hold your meeting? I think it's the house. Of course, Chief Inspector. I can hear my guests coming up the stairs. The house has everything. Why have you brought us here, Mr. Poirot? Don't, don't, don't listen to, uh, don't listen to Hector, guys. He doesn't know. Miss Cliff only identified him, as well as Miss Barnard. Yes, and the stockings he saw drove the same brand as the ones found at my aunt's. This is all true. However, a case is not closed if some questions remain open. And one question is, why did the murderer send me his letters? Why did he challenge me, Hercule Poirot? Perhaps he wanted to play with you, to taunt you. Xenophobia? Maybe he didn't like you because you're foreign. Um, I may be wrong, but... Maybe by provoking you, he was looking for glory? All these theories should be studied. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Why did the murderer make a mistake in the address? Because there was no Windows Word to help him correct it. You know, with the red squiggly line underneath the words you misspell? There's not that on a typewriter. They didn't add that till the, the last patch of the typewriter, but by then there was already computers. Hmm. Hmm. 
I never know with some of these three ones, because, like, I can get, like, the majority of it, but I don't know, because... Well, maybe... It's all about being a good guesser. we go. Didn't I have those three together before? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can't mess this one up. Why did the killer send his letter to Hercule Perot? Is everything clear now? You might like to explain your reasoning again. Of course. First of all, remember that the murderer made it a rule to always post his letter before the murder. He never digressed from that rule. However, in Cheston, he encountered a problem. The village has only 500 inhabitants. With advance warning, it would be easy to arrest him. Therefore, the murderer delayed his letter deliberately with the wrong address. The plan wouldn't have worked if he'd sent it to Scotland Yard or the papers because everybody knows their addresses. The mistake would have been corrected and the letter would have been on time. That is why the murderer chose me as the recipient. Because for his plan to succeed, it was necessary for at least one of the letters to have a wrong address and get lost. It was very cunning. Absolutely. It is a very subtle plan. It matches the profile we have drawn up of him perfectly. That of an intelligent, daring, and calculating murderer. But that's not how you describe cast. You are quite right, mademoiselle. Like you, I find it hard to believe that this dull character is the clever murderer we are looking for. Do madmen... I mean, if he's mad, he might have two very different sides. No doubt. But the murderer is not mad. All the specialists agree that he does not have the profile of a psychopath. But if Cust is not guilty, how do you explain his presence at the scene of the crimes? Mr. Clark's answer to your question is in the medical record of your brother's patients. Documents which Cust most certainly did not have access to. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. What do we know about Cust? Man, uh, this is a game. <laughs> he was easily influenced. He was wounded during the war. He was mentally fragile and easy to manipulate. Poor Babby. Uh, let's see. How can we explain Cust's presence at the crime scene? This was a door to door salesman. No, nope. I don't know if they have to be in a very specific order or not, like, it's so weird, because I'm pretty sure this is, I, this is right. Maybe you're... Maybe there's a crucial detail. Well, 
that, you miss you, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you tried the hectic guessing method? What? Have one up top and guess all of them and then try the next one? Yeah. I've done that once. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, now... There it is. Yeah. There it is. The hectic guessing method, it always works. Cuss was manipulated. okay. Dr. Clark's patients records provided a very useful list of potential victims, sorted by alphabetical order. The killer definitely used it, explaining the fact that all the victims were former patients of the doctor. It is this fact that clears Cust once and for all, because he never had access to these records. So how did he happen to be at the scene of the crimes? Either the murderer said he there, or Cust was following him closely. Cust's highly suggestible nature leads us to the second hypothesis. The murderer was manipulating him. He systematically sent Cus to the towns where he was going to strike, so that the suspicion would land on the poor man's shoulder. That's evil! What sort of killer could have such a plan? And what would he gain from three completely different murders? Indeed, it seems unlikely that the same murderer committed all the crimes. What should we take from that? There is not one murderer, but three accomplices, who all use the same scenario. Do you mean that three murderers, with quite different aims, joined forces to create a smoke screen? Here's another question. Is it still necessary to find a motive for each crime, and the one in Andover poses problem? Why was poor Mrs. Asher killed? Hmm, indeed. It would be best to forget the theory. Okay. Hey, did you get it wrong? I guess so. I guess that's not right. Um. Just one murder was of benefit to the murderer. The others were just diversions. On reflection, there is only one conclusion. The murderer killed once out of interest and twice to divert our attention. This reasoning points at two potential culprits. Franklin Clark? Donald Fraser? Yes, mademoiselle. That's good thinking. Mr. Fraser may have killed Betty out of jealousy. Mr. Clark may have killed his brother in order to inherit his large fortune. Both are the motive. But Donald, but Donald did not did have, have access, access to Dr. Clark's records. Please allow me to disagree with you, mademoiselle. Right. He works for Court and Brunskill, one of whose clients was Sir Carmichael. It doesn't prove that I went to Combside. You could have done it, and you may have used the opportunity to take a look at Sir Carmichael's records. You think I'm guilty? You? You? Or Mr. Franklin Clark? That's ridiculous! Both of you have a motive. The question is, which of you has the profile that most resembles the murderer? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. It's Donald. Because the profile of the murderer was that they like riding on trains. That's what I called! That's literally- I literally called him! And I only met him once! <laughs> I- cause he was like, they like trains, and I was like, hey, I know one guy who loves riding trains. Let's see. Indeed, let us look again at the murderer. Please, uh, so clever. Did I literally win the game by playing one episode of it? Maybe. 
Yes, he had a promising career. That's what that is. That is correct. Let's see. Self-confident. No? Uh... No? Oh, no, he's not self-confident. Maybe not, then. Okay. It looks like he's fitting in there all but one. Tempered though, he's not cold. He is generous though. So he only doesn't fit two of those profile points. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald may share many character traits with a murderer, but he does not have his cold indifference. He has a temper. It is hard to imagine him planning anything. Also, jealousy is his motive, and crimes of passion are rarely planned. That is true. Right, I suppose it's my turn to be subjected to the same scrutiny. You sound Absolutely. just like Hastings. <laughs> Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Clever. Uh... Okay, he's clever. Oh well. Yeah, hey, doing cool. You were close. <laughs> you were close. No. Uh, he's self-confident. It has something to do with her. He's a seducer. <laughs> Delicious. I'll take three, please. He likes trains. Oh, I forgot about that. In the safe, we found out that he liked trains, too. In the safe? Yeah, he is cold. And generous. No. Yeah. Oh, was that the one little detail that I let go? That he was going to pay for everybody's train there tickets? There is a disturbing similarity between Mr. Clark's profile and that of the killer. In actual fact, it is exactly the same. Mr. Poirot, your psychological studies are interesting, but your conclusions do not add up. Really? I have wished my brother's death. The inheritance is lawfully mine. I just have to wait. No, no, you had, you to, had act to act quickly. quickly. Because of Miss Gray. <gasps> Mademoiselle, also you haven't been telling the truth. There is no doubt in my mind that you would have found a way to marry Sir Carmichael after Lady Clark's death. For you, Mr. Clark, it was a disaster. If Miss Gray had children by your brother, you would not have inherited a thing. You realize the danger after reading several letters from Comsai, especially one in which your brother opened his heart to you. So you hurried home from China, and you took action. In truth, Cust was no more than a puppet manipulated by the real culprit. You, Mr. Clark. Such an imagination, Mr. Poirot. In fact, nobody manipulated Cust. The famous instructions he received by post. He wrote them on the typewriter. We know that for sure. How do you know that for oh, no. sure? That hasn't been... You know perfectly well. That is not true. Eh hey, bien, voilà. Light has now been shed on the ABC murders. Your theories are ingenious. But you haven't any proof. One point to him. For the moment, I have no material proof. Either I admit to it, or I bluff. Mm. 
One thing proves it. The prints you left on Cus typewriter. Enough. Oh, of course you wiped the typewriter before sending it. But not carefully enough. Scotland Yard has found your print along with those of Cus. I understand why you never wanted to lend me your new typewriter. And why you were searching for your brother's things. And the hole you dug on the moors. What did you hide there? The knife you used to kill your brother? Game, set, match. You win, Mr. Poirot. But it was worth trying. Don't come here! See, I knew that's what was going to happen. I'll never let you take me, Mr. Poirot. We can't let him kill himself, what? I'm sorry, oh Mr. my God! There is no easy death for you. I expected your reaction, so I used blanks. Bro! I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but your second chance has been lost. Franklin Clark will never inherit his brother's fortune. Oh my God! That got dark real fast. Yeah. <laughs> Woof! I'm really glad I decided to use the blanks. That could have been really bad. Disappointed at having missed the chance to become Lady Clark, Thora Gray left England. Donald Where did she Fraser go? and Megan Barnard married. We get to, where are they now? Mary Drower started to work for Lady Clark. The elderly lady's condition suddenly took a turn for the better. And a few months later, to Dr. Logan's great surprise, she was back on her feet again. According to this eminent physician, it appears to be an extremely rare case of spontaneous remission. Hey! Lady Clark has enjoyed very good health ever since. Journal of an Innocent. The incredible story of ABC. As for A.B. Cust, after being advised by Poirot, he made a great deal of money by selling his story to the press. Dang, awesome! And with business booming, the Black Swan has become the number one tourist attraction in the whole of Yorkshire, even more popular than York Minster. Well, there you have it, guys. We did it. We solved the mystery. That was actually really good. And even though I was scrutinizing every little bit, I missed that one little thing that he said. And had I just paid a little bit more attention to, like, what he said, I might have been able to pick him out. But, yeah. Well... That was really good. But one. you were really close. You came down to the last two. I was still, like, locked onto the landlady being the one who did it. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Something seems really interesting. And you weren't even there for the whole case. Oh, I no. was there for the whole case. <laughs> sure, if I was, I would have considered the landlady as well. But with all the information that I knew, and something about, like, the whole, like, I like trains yeah. to off. But see, that was all a red herring. Yes. So it was like, it was to throw us off to make us be like, oh, he likes trains. That was one of the profile things. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But thank you guys for joining us on this adventure. Um, if you guys like this kind of let's play, I can look for more mystery games. In fact, I want to say that the Sherlock home games that's in chapters is free with PlayStation Plus right now with the tier that I have. So I'm if you guys like this one, I might check that one out next and do that alongside everything else because I really like doing these ones. These ones are fun because I sit down and I pretty much do this in one sitting. We had a couple different recording sessions, but you know, for the most part, all one sitting. So yeah. And thank you, Heck, for joining me for this last part of it. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we will see you guys in whatever we do next. And just remember, everything blue is awesome. Rika, signing out. Bye-bye.